Good morning. This is Lama Jigme Gyanso of the Buddha Joy Meditation School. Welcome to the first week Vipassana follow along homework video. This is not a class. You're welcome to use this video, but questions are going to accumulate. And when they do, jot them down and, uh, and either write me in the commentary below or come to the next class and present your questions. Let's dig right in. Let's see, I'm going to go into the share screen mode. There we go, welcome to my desktop. Let's begin by chanting the four contemplations which turn the mind to meditation. We're going to use the triplet chant. A Majo teacher, constant and perfect protector, who is the centered spontaneous mind. Neither getting nor keeping the desired as well as enduring the disliked is universal. Be it causes, conditions, components, or conceptions, independence is but an illusion. Ever-changing one and all, there is nothing permanent to grasp. It is extremely important to make the most of these freedoms and opportunities we have received. Remember, oopsie, remembering this may, my mind ever notice, relax and flow. What's best to do now is chant the Tao Te Ching. We're going to ch only chant the Tao Te Ching this week for approximately three minutes. We're going to use the book and chant. Tao Te Ching chapter one. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The unnameable is the eternally real. Naming is the origin of all particular things. Free from desire, you realize a mystery. Caught in desire, you see only the manifestations. Please chant along. This is not a performance piece. Yet mystery and manifestations arise from the same source. This source is called darkness. This source is called darkness. Darkness within darkness, the gateway to all understanding. Darkness within darkness, the gateway to all understanding. And then we make our way to the second chapter. Tao Te Ching chapter two. When people see some things as beautiful, other things become ugly. When people see some things as good, other things become bad. Being and non-being create each other, difficult and easy support each other. Long and short define each other, high and low depend on each other. Before and after follow each other, before and after follow each other. Therefore the sage acts without doing anything and teaches without saying anything. Things arise and she lets them come. Things disappear and she lets them go. She has but does not possess, acts but does not expect. When her work is done, she forgets that that is why it lasts forever. Now teaching chapter three. If you overesteem great men, the people become powerless. If you overvalue possessions, the people begin to steal. 
the centuries by emptying people's minds and fills it. And let's see, let's try this again. The sagely is by emptying people's minds and filling their cause, by weakening their ambition and not finding their resolve. He helps people lose everything they know, everything they desire, and creates confusion those who think that they know. Practice not doing and everything will fall into place. Practice not doing and everything will fall into place. And that concludes the uh, chanting of the Tao Te Ching. So let's minimize this. Return to the chanting guide. As we meditate, during each in-breath, we will silent on the first level. During each in-breath, we will silently and mentally recite noticing. And during each out-breath, we will silently and mentally recite relaxing. On a second level, a deeper level, in addition to mentally reciting noticing and relaxing, we're always also going to do our best to actually notice and actually relax. On a third level, a deeper level, this is all done passively, not actively. It's very, very passive. Just as it is gravity that keeps the needle of a record, uh, of a phonograph player, a phonograph, in the groove of the record. Likewise, it is our Passivity and a relaxation that will stay in the groove in harmony with our breathing as we notice whatever's cartwheeling across the stage of our mind or our body, whether it's our circumstance, our sensations, our emotions, our thoughts, our memories, our fantasies, or any combination of the above. So we're going to perform two sets of one quarter mala, as is outlined right here for the first week. So it takes about five minutes. Really, it's, it's just to get your feet wet. Within 12 weeks, you'll be up to 60 minutes. But today, five is dandy. We are going to extend the thumb and advance the mala during the out breath for the first quarter mala. That really helps us to experience passive mindfulness. If you have a mala, please count that mala upon your left ring finger. And we, we pull because primates pull. We have superior pulling muscles. If you don't have a mala, then simply pantomime counting a mala barehanded. But by all means, go to the website and order a mala from Amazon as soon as you can. Let's begin.
Remember, our job is not to concentrate on the breath, merely to be in harmony with it. We are halfway through. At this point, we are going to count our mala upon our left middle finger. If you do not have a mala, simply pantomime counting a mala as if it's pretend. If you have a mala, extend your thumb and advance the mala during the in breath or doing nothing during the out breath with your fingers helps us to emphasize our experience of passive insight. The practice is still the same, noticing on the in-breath, relaxing on the out-breath. You will have questions, jot them down for the next class or the next video. Let us not confuse letting go with pushing away. We neither indulge the stuff that comes up nor suppress the stuff that comes up. Our job is to be passive and observe it tranquilly. That concludes this week's second quarter mala. Now we've generated positive energy. 
we're going to invest that energy in universal well-being. Let's use the triplet chant again as we chant the Metta Sutta. Now, this is not a prayer. This is merely a guiding of our intention. Words guide our intention, and intention guides our energy. May all be skilled and peaceful, as well as seek the good. May all be able and ever straightforward of gentle speech and not proud. May all be easily supported, supported and content and burdened with the senses calmed. May all be wise, not arrogant. May all be without desire for the possessions of others. May all do nothing mean, nor that the wise would reprove. May all beings be happy, may they live in safety and joy. All living beings, whether weak or strong, stout, holy, and tall, or short, seen or unseen, near or distant, born or to be born, may they all be happy. May no one deceive another or despise any being in any state. May none by anger or hatred wish harm to another, as a mother watches over her only child, willing to risk her own life to protect her child. So with a boundless heart, may all cherish each living being, Suffusing the whole wide world with unobstructed loving kindness. May each be unattached to speculation, views, and sense desires, and have clear vision for such a person can never be reborn in the cycle of suffering. Standing or walking, sitting or lying down during all one's waking hours. May each remain mindful of this heart and this way of living that is the best in the world. That concludes this week's homework practice. Please form it every morning and every evening. It's easier if you do it the same time each day, even on the weekends, because repetition is the mother of skill. If you have questions, and you want a quicker, and you're not coming to a weekly class, remember, drop them down in the comment area below on the YouTube page, and I'll do best, my best to respond to you via video that within seven days. May you, let's see, let me uh, stop the sharing for a moment. There we go. May you and yours be healthy and happy.